Welcome to Salisbury University on the Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. I'm your host, Susan Purnell. While SU's mission is to educate and prepare young men and women for a career and their own tomorrows, the university community connections also are important on so many levels. Today I'm joined by Dr. Michael Scott, Dean of the Richard A. Henson School of Science and Technology, to discuss how the Henson School connects with those both on and off campus. I'll also be joined by Alan Kohler, Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management, who will tell us about a new program helping to make SU more affordable for some Maryland residents. First is Dr. Scott. So welcome back, Mike. Good to see you. Thank. Good to see you too. Yes, in in these sort of easier days. We're getting there. We yes, are getting there. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, we're here to talk a little bit about the history of the Henson School, and in particular about Richard Henson, who's mm -hmm name is on everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you title health and uh, the YMCA and of course SU mm -hmm. um, have all been beneficiaries of his magnificent philanthropy. Absolutely. Um, tell us how Richard Henson decided to endow the science school here at SU. Right. So Richard Henson, as probably most of your viewers know, um, started the regional airline here in Salisbury as well as in Hagerstown. Um, he actually um, innovated the concept of a regional airline where you'd have small planes take people to a large hub and then from the hub they then mm -hmm. spread out to other places. So he actually was a, a pioneer, an innovator in that back in the 1960s. So um, he became obviously very tied to the community um, and uh, when he sold Henson Airlines, Piedmont Airlines, um, in the 1980s he turned to full-time philanthropy because his business had done very well. Mm -hmm. So his focus on aeronautics, um, he always had, because of that, a real interest in science, as well as education. He thought that education was the absolute critical component um, in order to improve people's lives. So the Henson School of Science and Technology at Salisbury University was sort of the perfect blend of the mm -hmm. two things that he was really interested in. Absolutely, I think yeah. I told you earlier that my um, Parents lived next door to him, right? And he right. fixed everything, right? My dad couldn't fix anything; yep. couldn't fix a sandwich, right? So you know, they would call him all the time when any appliance he could fix anything. Mm -hmm. he, absolutely, he really was, was a very amazing. handy guy. Absolutely. Very handy guy. Yep. So I know one of the acronyms that I hear a lot about is the ESRGC, which I know is a U.S. Uh, sorry, a U.S. an SU entity right. that is in partnership with many other entities in the community. Mm -hmm. Tell us what does it stand for and what do they do? Sure. So the ESRGC is the Eastern Shore Regional GIS Cooperative. Um, it's a partnership between Salisbury University, the Midshore Regional Council, and then the Tri-County Council of the Lower Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. um, it provides uh, mapping services, data analysis, data visualization services, primarily for the towns and counties on the Delmarva Peninsula and, and specifically Maryland's Eastern Shore. Um, but they also partner with um, businesses, nonprofits, um, and state of Maryland agencies to provide these sorts of data analyses, data visualization, and, and mapping services. All of those are very expensive and they take a lot of technical training. Many towns, for example, just don't have the capacity in a small town to be able to do that. We realized, now it's 18 years ago, that uh, many times on the Eastern Shore, towns and counties were often being outcompeted by other municipalities, say on the Western Shore, that were much larger and had many more technical capabilities. We wanted to try to bring those technical capabilities to the shore, but each individual town couldn't pay for that themselves, mm -hmm. so we do it collectively. Um, and like I said, we've been doing it for 18 years. Can you give me an example of one of the projects? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they've got their hands in all kinds of things. So it ranges everything from um, sewer and water mapping to impervious surface mapping um, to um, economic development projects, mm -hmm. uh, actually mapping where there is um, potential for possible economic development or not. Um, sidewalk studies, looking at the connectivity between neighborhoods and schools mm -hmm. to make sure sc kids have a safe way to get from their neighborhood to their school. Um, natural resources stuff, so looking at wetlands loss, um, mapping of flooding, and so figuring out where it might flood, how much it might flood, so that we can better protect buildings from potentials for flood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we just actually finished up, uh, well, not almost finished up, sort of a major economic development visualization piece post-COVID. 
So looking at how businesses in the mid and lower shore um, uh, reacted to the pandemic, how they're feeling coming out of the pandemic, mm-hmm. where do they see they have the most needs, et cetera. Um, yeah, so it's a wide range of yeah, different kinds really of things. Is. And I, I know during the pandemic, they turned some of their efforts toward uh, some coronavirus research. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that. Right, yeah. When the pandemic hit, of course, it was all hands on deck. So the, so the ESRGC actually put all of their projects aside oh. and immediately lent a hand to the state of Maryland, um, to Tidal Health, and to Salisbury University. Because there, in the early days of the pandemic, there was just not a lot of great um, uh, uh, data visualizations to understand who was getting sick, how often they were getting, you know, mm-hmm. where they were getting sick, where did they see positivity rates rising, et cetera. So, um, so they actually helped visualize um, uh, pandemic data. Uh, with Tidal Health, they were looking at um, respiratory therapy um, uh, assets. So um, you mean uh, what we had available yeah, across the state? Mm-hmm. So that was the whole thing: is moving different assets to different parts of the state yeah. if they needed them, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, the dashboard that they built for Salisbury University to track our positivity rate, how how much disease we had, and then now how much vaccination we have. That dashboard continues to operate. It's the primary operational dashboard for SU. Oh, that's great! I, yep. I had no idea how involved they were or that right. the college was with. Um, example title health. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Eventually our um, dashboards at the state were able to be replaced because the state, um, you know, it takes them a little while to get up to speed. We were able to respond very quickly and get them something. They eventually replaced our dashboards with theirs, but we were very proud to help in the early days. Absolutely, so. that, that's so important. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were lucky to have right. this group. Um, tell us about some of the leaders in their field that have come out of the Henson School. Right. Uh, so many. Um, we've got just a tremendous group of alumni uh, from the Henson School of Science. Um, I'll give you one in particular. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, well, one of, the, one of the best that's just a great story here on the shore is uh, Brian Brushmiller. Mm-hmm. So Brian is the owner operator of Bur- Burley, Burley Oak, Oak right? right? So he was a chemistry major when mm-hmm. he was at Salisbury. Um, uh, we have um, uh, uh, Dr. Leslie Steffel, I think her name is. So she is a colonel in the U.S. Air Force. She actually is the primary medical doctor for um, the uh, Air Force's response when they are responding to sort of medical disasters. Mm -hmm. So she is a former uh, graduate of Salisbury University. Um, uh, We've got, um, you know, like the the uh, chief entomologist and North Carolina State University is an SU grad. Um, Yeah. There's a, there's a lot, a lot of real, and, and extremely broad in the grand scheme of things, yeah. yeah. It's a lot to be proud about. Now, I know the Henson faculty is also involved in a lot of projects. Some, right. for example, to do with Wacomico Rivers Health right. and with the growing hemp industry. Yep. Tell us a little bit more about the faculty involvement. Sure, yeah. So um, with the Wicomico River, that's been a long-running partnership between Salisbury University and the Wicomico Creek Watchers organization um, to actually look at um, uh, uh, pollution, or the lack thereof, uh, within the Wicomico River. So they actually empower a group of citizen scientists with the Creek Watchers group to go out and sample the river at regular intervals uh-huh. um, uh, to look for um, nitrogen and phosphorus concentrations, dissolve oxygen, turbidity, that sort of thing. And then they publish a report every so often on the health of the Wicomico River so we can see whether the things we're doing to try to help improve it is working. Um, another great one is that the hemp industry, um, you know, just a few years ago, it was not legal to grow industrial hemp here in the state of Maryland. They enabled a program to allow the growing of industrial hemp. And we should explain to folks, this is not the same thing as marijuana. They are very closely related, but industrial hemp, by definition, has extremely low values of THC, mm-hmm. the chemical that brings the high. So, what in are marijuana. they using the hemp for? All kinds of things. The the number one thing these days is uh, CBD oil. Okay. So the flowers from the hemp plant mm-hmm. actually um, create the oil from which you extract, and then you create all the the CBD products. Mm-hmm. The hemp plant itself is extremely woody and strong, and so it's used for clothes and rope and all sorts of I other... I have seen clothes with yep. hemp in them, yeah. They've been making paper out of it. There's a lot of potential op- opportunities. The key is, though, when they started this program in the state of Maryland, they said you have to partner with a institution of higher education in the state of Maryland to do research 
it has to be a joint research project for you to begin to explore growing hemp. Mm -hmm. And many universities didn't want to touch it. Um, we stepped up. We actually enabled 26 different hemp growers across the state to partner with SU to do a research project to try to figure out what it's going to take to get hemp to grow well in mm -hmm. Maryland. It's mm -hmm. an open question. Um, and so by doing so, we helped get those businesses off the ground. They couldn't have operated without a partnership with a, with a, a university. And we were happy to be there to provide that. So, yeah. uh, That's amazing. Yeah, we're very excited <laughs> you, about that. So you're just so into the community service right. aspect Absolutely. Of, Correct. Um, of the university. It's, ama it's Absolutely. just amazing. Now, I know the Henson School conducts some math and science contests. And we a little do. bit of that was put on hold during the Absolutely. pandemic. Are some of those contests coming back? They are coming back. Yeah, I know. So exciting. Um, uh, we have several of them. They run in both the spring and the fall. The ones that run in the spring that's going to be happening now are um, both a high school math competition and a high school computer science programming competition. So the um, high school programming competition is at the end of March, March 30th, mm -hmm. I think. And then uh, the high school math competition will be at the end of April. And indeed, they miss this when they're gone. This is for particularly high achieving uh, math, computer science students, um, when they're in their high schools to be able to lock horns with other high schools and figure out sort of who has the best mm -hmm. mathematicians or whatever. It is a really exciting thing for those students. It gets their teachers motivated, right? They get to come to the university, they get to explore what SU is all about, mm -hmm. and then they get to do these competitions. So we're glad to have them back. Like a math -alon. Absolutely. Yeah, that's Absolutely. terrific. Yep. Um, I know that you have a collaboration with the high schools in that a, a student in high school can also attend SU classes. Correct. Um, particularly at the Henson School. Yep. Now, how does that benefit the student, and how does the student even know about the, the availability of such? Right, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a major thing, and we continue to try to get the word out to both students but and their parents, if mm -hmm. they're a junior and senior in high school. We have agreements signed with all of the um, boards of education mm -hmm. in the low, in the three Lower Shore counties as well as all the independent high schools um, that students can come for an extremely discounted rate of tuition. They can come to SU and actually take college courses in their junior or senior year. Um, it is tremendously advantageous to these students, particularly in my realm for science and technology students. Because science, the science curriculum is so um, regimented, you have to have general chemistry before you can take organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. You have to have Calc 1 before you can take Calc 2, et cetera, right? Most of our science programs look this way. When you attempt to squeeze all of that curriculum into four years, which is our goal, is to get these students graduated in a four-year time frame, it is very intense. Mm -hmm. um, worth it, but intense, right? So giving students the opportunity to take just even a few of these classes while they're still, say, a senior in high school, gives them a lot more choices, a lot more room to maneuver. And they get credit for that in college? They do, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, college credit and high school credit at the same time, the mm -hmm. dual enrollment. It gives them the ability, if they wanted to do study abroad, if they wanted to do research, if they wanted to do internships. A lot of times, students who come in native freshmen have not had any credit at all. Um, they often are very tight right to the end to be mm -hmm. able to get it done. Um, we also should say that many students right now are taking a lot of advanced placement credit, AP credit, while they're in high school. But unfortunately, many colleges are now turning away from giving credit for AP because the quality of a particular AP class is just tough to tell. Whereas if you take a, a college course from a four-year university like Salisbury University, mm -hmm. that almost assuredly transfers certainly within the university system of Maryland, but also to schools and colleges across the country. So it's extremely transferable. Um, for students who have the particular financial aid, it doesn't even cost anything. It's absolutely free. So we really encourage students to take advantage of this. They find out about it through their guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guidance counselor in every one of the local high schools that is a sort of specialist on dual enrollment. And so we encourage them to reach out to that. There's also, if you just go to the SU website and hit the search box and type in dual enrollment, you'll see for your county, which courses count for dual enrollment, how much it costs, all those sorts of things. You know, I was thinking psychologically too, I think it's really great for them to dip their toe into the college experience absolutely. a little early, just to get the feel for it. Because absolutely. I was absolutely scared to death to go to college. Right. I mean, I had no idea what it really entailed. Yep. And I remember my 
parents saying to me, it's going to be so different from high school. Mm -hmm. And that scared me. Right, exactly. But if I'd had that experience, I might have just been a little more comfortable. This really does demystify it mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. um, it also gives them a great deal of self-confidence going into wherever they, I mean, we'd love for them to take dual enrollment and then, of course, enroll in Salisbury University. Sure. That would be great. But no matter where they go, it doesn't matter. Uh -huh. They're going to feel much more confident about their themselves and their capabilities, which is a, a critical component to their long-term success. Yeah, I think that's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's so great talking to you again, Mike. Absolutely. And um, hope the rest of the year everything goes up. That's the key. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. <laughs> and goes away. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you again. Thank you. The Henson School clearly has many great connections to assist the community and its graduates are making a difference. If you or someone you know may be interested in a STEM career, the Henson School might be right for you. Let's learn more. If you're thinking about majoring in a STEM field, Salisbury University and the Henson School is the right choice. We've got a small school feel, but we have big school resources. That's critical for teaching and learning in science especially. The Hanson School is just the right combination of small enough to know your classmates, to engage in cutting edge science exploration with your professors, but large enough to have the programs, courses, and resources you need to be truly successful. Our talented faculty have made teaching science undergraduates their life's work, whether it's working on cures for diabetes or cancer, protecting elephants from extinction, or finding habitable planets outside our solar system our faculty have a real passion for cutting-edge research and teaching. We continue to innovate our curriculum to better serve our students, launching programs in data science, geoengineering, environmental biology, biomedical technology, and integrated science. Our student support services are second to none. We are committed to your success in science and mathematics once you arrive on campus. And our alumni network is thousands strong each one cheering you on and giving you a helping hand up as you graduate and beyond. Majoring in a STEM field at Salisbury University is a proven pathway to lifelong success. We just spoke with Dr. Scott about how dual enrollment can help students financially prepare for SU, but the university is making enrollment more cost effective for some Maryland students through a new program. My next guest, Alan Kohler, Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management, is here to talk about that. So welcome, Alan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes. So before we get into the program that we want to discuss today, mm. let's talk a little bigger picture. Yeah. And that's how much has our economy and the prospective student loan debt had an effect on college applications? So COVID really has had the biggest impact okay. uh, as regards to enrollment at all higher education institutions. I bet. We saw a decline of roughly about 5% since COVID hit. It's much smaller than I would have thought. Yes, but it's impacted institutions differently. Mm -hmm. So flagship and larger, uh, the top ranked private institutions have seen enrollment growths, whereas pretty much everywhere else has seen the decline with the biggest hit coming at community colleges. And I think a big part of that is really just access being one. People are unsure with the economy mm -hmm. the way it is about investing in a higher education mm -hmm. uh, investment, really. And this is actually the best time to invest in a higher education. Um, it's... It, what do you mean by that? Well, having it, statistics show that having a bachelor's degree sets you up 40 years down the line after you graduate that you are likely... A, uh, to earn over a million dollars more than if you just had a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. And so now is the time when to really capitalize on, on really a, a lot of financial uh, incentives to go to college. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, our new program is our Pell Promise program here right. at SU. And it is all about access and helping out the students that need it most. Okay, so tell me more about, the, it's called the Seagull Pell Promise, right? Correct, yes. Okay, tell me a little bit more about it. Yes, and so what happens is when a Maryland resident applies and is admitted to Salisbury University, mm -hmm. they file the FAFSA form, which pretty much everyone has probably heard of the FAFSA form. Sure. Um, it's the federal financial form aid. for financial aid, right. correct, yes. And so they get their financial aid package back. And so for students that need the most amount of financial support, 
Typically, they are awarded, it's called a Pell Grant, mm -hmm. and it's money that doesn't need to be paid back, and it comes from the federal government. Any student that qualifies for that Pell Grant, what Salisbury University is going to do is we're going to take the free money that you earn, subtract that from your overall cost, and we're going to cover the difference for your tuition. So essentially, it's tuition free for any student that qualifies for the Pell for Grant. For the Pell Grant. Now, let me understand that. Where does that money come from? It is institutional money. Oh, okay. So, so SU is sponsoring this. Yeah, it is. It's it not is. a Maryland program. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Maryland does have their own state support mm -hmm. that they offer, but it's it's typically not enough to cover all of a tuition cost. Mm -hmm. And so Salisbury University is going to step in at that last leg and help cover the, the remaining cost for that. So how many students does the university expect will be, they'll be able to help with this kind of program? Well, it really depends on what our class is going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we are on track to bring in one of the largest classes that we've seen in years. So we're starting to see numbers that look like pre-COVID numbers. Mm -hmm. And so uh, while not every student qualifies for Pell, a good portion of our students do qualify for, for the Pell Grant. And so we anticipate to see you know, the institution spend several hundred thousand dollars on this initiative. And to me, as someone who is a first-generation student, I'm the first in my family to go to college. Mm -hmm. This is something that I'm very passionate about because it's really just about opening the door to more students, uh, more local students, and just more students from across the state of Maryland to attend Salisbury University. Now, with that kind of program, I would imagine that the application prospect process must be a little tedious, is it, or extensive? Students are automatically considered. So as long as- So they don't as, even have to do anything. Correct, as long as That's they file amazing. the FAFSA and they've been admitted, if they qualify for Pell, they're going to get it. Wow. We've, so this we've was, made this as easy as possible. That's for it, that's really amazing. Yeah. Um, this was just announced. Yeah. So have you seen students reaching out to take um, advantage of it? Absolutely. Uh, again, even though students don't need to do anything additional mm -hmm. outside of file for the FAFSA form, uh, we've seen our parent portal uh, pers or admitted students and their parents asking about it. Um, we've seen a lot of interest already, and so we're excited. Today is actually the first day that we're sending out financial aid packages. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and talking with you about this because families are going to start getting notified today about this. This is such a great program. I, I hope it really helps in terms of getting more people to apply to Salisbury University. Yeah, again, I, I think it is twofold. One is we want to make sure that any student that wants to attend college has the ability to do so, uh, but more that we're helping out the state of Maryland and its residents mm -hmm. um, by lowering the overall student debt, particularly with families that need the help the most. We're, we're there to help out. I'm so glad the college made that decision. So am I. That's great. And good luck to you. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, thanks for being with me today. Thanks. A number of SU's great cultural and educational events are happening again in person. Let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities.
much going on and I love being on campus and taking advantage of that. I'd like to thank my guests, Dr. Michael Scott, Dean of the Richard A. Henson School of Science and Technology, and Alan Kohler, Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University On The Air. Thank you for watching. Thank you.